for for myself. Now, I should probably look at it at this point to go a little bit further into my into my recovery. I should probably get some more help, right? I mean, there's people out there. I've never. I told Kevin this morning. I never accepted help um, from anybody. What? Ready? No, I was talking, but oh, I didn't know I had any call-ins. I guess I got a call in. Yeah. Tom. Uh, Sorry about Tom, being in the middle of my story. Here. Who is it? Tom. What's up, Tom? How are you, Mark Jennison? How about, how about you tell me how you're working the service drive now? Uh, no, I haven't been. <laughs> just, they asked me to take it over because no one's been working it. So, so nobody in the whole dealership has been working on the service drive at all? I go. How many, the top, is this Tom Holtzlaw? Huh? Is this, is this what, Tom Holtzlaw? Yes. I just saw a post, okay. Um, so let me ask you this real quick. Who's the senior salesman there? So that so so he's letting. Here's the problem. Julio's letting tons of deals going through his hands, right? By not working yeah. those guys, because I'm sure there's some retainment coming in through the service area. What are you gonna do? Let me ask you this question. When I teach you how to do it, or I tell you what to do, how are you gonna handle the fact that it might be Julio's customer? That's a that's a question we have to address right away. Are you gonna be okay with that? Are you gonna split it? Are you gonna set them up for Julio? Uh, it kind of depends on the situation. If it's a, if they say something about Julio in the um Okay, so how often? Where's your coffee machine at your at your dealership? Um, got one back in the corner around from the service lounge, and then we have one upstairs uh, where there's another another waiting lounge. So predominantly, there's always somebody in the service area, right? I mean, there's a coffee machine there. You could go get coffee from, and you could strike strike up a conversation. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So there's a couple. How tight are you with the service manager? All right, so you're going to want to tighten up that relationship, and we're going to do it yeah. two different ways, okay? The service manager obviously sees all those people. If nobody's working the service lane at all, no. okay, so he's going to know what he's got on the books, what's coming in, what type of vehicles. You can kind of get a foreshadow of, of the future and see what you're actually dealing with. And he talks to those guys all the time. And So if they're just letting deals go, a guy's got a three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 bill, and he's not telling anybody, then the dealership's losing money overall, I, I would think, right? Because yeah. you should be able to convert some of those people. So the first thing I would do is make a, a relationship with him so that anything that comes through there, you get a crack at. The second thing that I would do is as much as I say stay away from the hotel and don't drink the coffee, I love coffee. I just don't want to be hanging out with a bunch of people drinking coffee, okay? Yeah. So what I would do is I'd go down there all the time. If I saw three, four, five different people in the service area, I'm just going to tell them what's going on. As like They don't even need to know that I'm a salesman right off the bat, but just spark, spark up a conversation, talk to them, find out what they're here for. And then obviously you know they're in service already. Ask them what, it's do, what kind of car they got. Find out how long they had it. Do a little needs analysis there. And then basically just ask them to show, go show them a car. What's okay. the worst thing that's going to happen? Say no. Okay. Um, the easiest thing for me when I, you know, I didn't do a lot of them because my guy Randy Rollins, he sold like tons of a lot of service. So I learned really early that every time I go in to take a customer from the service lounge, it was pretty much Randy's. So not that I, and I like Randy a lot. I just wasn't trying to set up appointments for him. So what I would do is I would sort through, find out, see if it wasn't Julio's, see if they had an inkling of, of, of looking for a new car, and then just get them out on the lot and show them something. I mean, they've got an hour, hour and a half to kill, depending on what they're doing. But the other thing you can do is when you know that service manager, if you do sense a deal, you can get them to slow down a little bit on their car so we can put them a little more time with you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. And then obviously, I don't know if you guys do any equity mining or anything like that, but the other thing I would do is at the end of the week, if you can get a report to the people that did have their car in there that had high ticket uh, items that didn't get fixed, and then just call them. Put them as part of your, put them as your three, four, five calls a week, depending on how much you guys do. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do right now. Okay. Anything else, buddy, while I got you on the phone? No. It gives me something to start with. All right. How are you doing otherwise? No? Well, listen, yeah. 
if you need anything, I know it's been a while since we talked. Don't hesitate to reach out, okay? All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. Bye. I think that's a, I think that's a good spot for us to take a little break. Okay. And cool. Come back to your story then. All right. was at all right so i'm back in action here and uh man i'm feeling like i said i'm feeling a little bit crabby not crabby a little bit tired a little bit down and out today so i hope this isn't uh my energy is probably not that great um but yeah so basically i'm gonna go back to today being four years since i lost everything and obviously i'm about i'm just gonna take this minute to talk about some stuff that's going on so as john you came in and heard the story i had with kevin today like i'm in a super transition period this started in the beginning of may and it's pushing me. So I've been struggling every day. And it actually go back two months ago. I pretty much went through a freaking hard time where things just freaking unraveled on me. And now I'm fighting back through it right now. And every single minute, I'm trying to figure out how not to go backwards and how not to relapse. So to get back on the, the topic about my brand, unfortunately, and I don't wish on any, any of you, I know there's a couple that follow me that, that have the same problem, but I got branded with struggle. Like it didn't choose, I didn't choose it. It chose me. And it's not as easy as you think. So, um, but I was able to exploit that and, and put it out there. And I just said this here the other day, like, or today, I'm great at fixing everyone else's problems. I'm probably one of the fucking best out there. I have the answer for everything because I've been through it, but my life sometimes is in, in shambles and a little bit tough. So this comeback story, this comeback thing is actually what helps me keep motivated and keep positive. But whatever your brand is, so I would just go back to like, we had a guy, it brings me back to uh, Phoenix where a guy had, he was a DJ and he loved DJing and he wanted to get it out there. He wanted to know how to incorporate um, being a DJ with, uh, with selling cars. And Alan Dickey had a great idea. He's like, you know, put some headphones on or take some pictures at the, at the DJ booth where you're spinning up rhymes for or, uh, mixing up sales or whatever. You can, you can actually like incorporate both of them. He's like, yeah, but I'm a hip hop DJ. Dude, people love hip hop, right? I, I like it. I think sometimes I don't know the old stuff, but my point is, it doesn't really matter what you're about. Just don't be boring. Pick something that you love and you're authentic about and actually give a shit. And another thing, don't lie, right? Don't be somebody you're not. Put out who you want to be, who are you, what do you want to be known as, and all that. So what other questions we got for me, man? All right, yeah, let's, let's start out some of the questions. <laughs> so uh, we, we got some questions here. Uh, we put out a little post yesterday. Um, first question comes from Samuel Braid, uh, Bradley. Bradley, uh, how many platforms should I be using? All of them. Sounds good. Simple. I mean, to get started, obviously, a lot of the traction, a lot of your world is on Facebook right now. But what's cool about like, and even I, even I'm a little bit guilty of this. Like Instagram is kind of to me. I like to write the things. I like to make the videos. So Instagram isn't exactly my ideal cup of tea. But at the same time, I see the traction that, that a post gets with them hashtags. It can really work and get you into a different audience. 
Um, but the cool thing is about your Snapchat is that's a direct line into someone else's phone. It's like being able to put one picture out and have that go into, I don't know, I got a couple thousand or I don't even know how many thousands of people I have on my Snapchat, but I can put one video out and it goes right to them and they choose to open it or not to open it. Or you can direct message them, right? It's completely different than Facebook where people have to like, comment, stuff like that. So what I'm saying is figure out how to get on every single uh, platform and utilize it to its best. I mean, you might want to try like match.com too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And then, we, yeah, we have our man, Bill Have saying. Bill Have. Uh, yeah, Bill Have. Yeah, he says great question. Uh, actually, he has a question here too. Bill Have has a question. Uh, how hard was it for you to get where you are now? I'm going to answer that back with a question. It's not where I'm at now. It's where I'm going, man. This is just a step along the journey. And I know you and I have spoke a little bit. We have, a, we, have a de- we have some similar past. I actually watched your Snapchat about your little house, an apartment where you live with your mom and you guys didn't have anything. So you're doing the same thing. But how hard is it? It's fucking hard. Okay? Every day is a struggle. Like, and I'm not just saying it's a blessing, but it's a struggle because you get up. I mean, there's days where as I'm building this thing and I'm completely self-funded and we're doing it or, or there's so many different moving parts that it can, pu- it can fall apart at any minute, but you just gotta keep pushing. Um, I didn't have the desire to be in the car world for very long, I wanted to go this way. And I know they say that, that thing like, those who can't sell, teach, but dude, hands down, I can sell better than all those people every day in my life. But I truly have a story to inspire. So if you ask how long or how hard it was, dude, it's been 21 years of straight up addiction, struggles, depression, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, um, broken marriages, broken money. I mean, you name it. So it's been, it's been, uh, it's taken its toll on me. I looked at some pictures of me the other day from like two or from when I went into selling cars or like when I got out of rehab, I looked younger. I probably look like I aged like five years in the past year. So it's, it's been a diff- it's been difficult. Awesome. All right, let's do one more question and we'll take another break here. Uh, Joy Luke has a question. How do you decide on a tagline? Oh, that, that's easy. So my tagline, I mean, I guess like you're dominate your day. We said that enough times. Like Kevin, I think in there is make it happen. Um, I mean, you see the things out there all the time, like, or what is it? Make it great or something that's great. So I don't even know his off top of off top of my head. But everybody has something they say. So what is it that you say on a daily basis over and over? Or if you're thinking about a hashtag line, like what I like to set up a hashtag versus a, a tagline, like that I say at the end. But a hashtag of something of your goals, like maybe it's like for me, it was uh, the amount of cars I wanted to hit, or amount of people you want to help, or um, a number of money you want to raise for a charity. So find something interesting and then put that out there, and people will gain momentum with it. Perfect. All right, let's take another break and then we'll come back and answer the rest of the questions. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome, we're back here, everybody. All right, we just got a few more questions here. Uh, so yeah, let's continue where we were. Um, the next question we have is- Is there um, any comments in there or no? Just like, just in general comments? Yeah, anything let's check it out. The people ask while we're live? Nothing right now. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, so next question uh, from Don Brown. How do you get your brand up and going on uh, on these platforms, he says on YouTube, but we also just in general social media. How do you get your brand from being, you know, 
Don, man, man, you were you were at the uh, you were at the event, so I know when you watch this. I mean, the same way that Jonathan did it, the same way that I did it, the same way that Alan did it, the same way that Bill Have did it, the same way that you're going to do it, as you just got to take action. It all starts with a decision, okay? I mean, I wish I could tell you some sort of shortcut on how to – I mean, unless you ask me physically how to put it on there. I mean, that's all just buttons on your phone. It's not that difficult. But what it boils down to is not really giving a crap what anyone thinks out there. And, you know, you make the first video. Maybe, you know, you're looking at it and – Maybe you're not, you're half your head's cut off or, or whatever you're doing, right? But it doesn't really matter. You just got to hit send and put it out there. You can't worry about what other people think at first. You know, I, I, I don't know if I said this at your segment, but in order to be great, you got to be good. In order to be good, you got to be bad. In order to be bad, you got to suck. In order to suck, you got to get started. And over and over and over every time in my life, that's what keeps showing up, right? So all I can tell you right now is start a video. Like I didn't, my brand just is still changing. We're, I'm evolving into something new right now, which is exciting. But I started with what I was at the time, who I was, how I wanted to be known, and I put it out there. And daily, actually, every single day. I mean, I've got, in the past year, I've got like a couple thousand videos on Facebook or, or all over the place, which is, which is amazing. So just start it up, man. It's not that hard. If you need me to call you and coach you through it, I can do that. Awesome. Next question is from uh, John Kilman. Uh, how do you start slash develop a business when you are unsure uh, what venture is right for you? All right, cool. That's a great question, John. Um, because I'm going to talk about experience. You know, I just, I just mentioned about that trucking company that I lost, right? Yes, I lost it. I lost millions and millions of dollars. I lost tons of dignity, tons of respect, tons of just who I was. And it caused a fucking turmoil of problems for me in the future. But guess what? I was in a business that I was absolutely miserable. I wasn't excited about running freight down the road. I wasn't excited about that. So when it came time to build another one, I went with what I knew, what I knew and I built another trucking company that was successful, but it never fulfilled me. I just didn't feel right. I got out of that. I went into the car business and I at least found a little bit something that was there. But then what happened is this showed up. My why got super strong, which is my little kid, which is what was going on and, and me coming, the story of coming back. And my why got strong and I decided, what can I do that I can line my passion with my profit because ultimately we got to make money. So for maybe it's you with being, a, maybe it's basketball. Or, I mean, I don't know what it is for you, but I would say hands down, go with what you love. Go with what you need to do every day. Go with what's going to make you happy. I ask some of my guys all the time and I have to ask myself this. If I die right now, am I doing what I want to do? The answer is yeah. I mean, at the second, do I want to be on this camera? Yes, I do, but I just don't feel good. But the truth is, at the end of the day, am I doing what I want to do? And that is absolutely yes. As stressful as it is, as hard as it is, at times when I feel like my life's in shambles and I, but I still have to pick up the phone and work for somebody else and try to help them, I know that I'm putting positivity on the world. So what I'm saying for you is align with what makes you feel good. If you don't feel good, nothing's going to matter. And you know what? I don't know what, what that is. Maybe you're making two, $300,000. You got to go back on a little bit of money to go forward. I, I don't know. Go with what you know. Go with what makes you feel good and get after it. Awesome. Next question we have is from Christopher Long. Um, and then after this, we'll wrap it up. Um, this question is, um, as a assistant manager, how do I do more for my guys to get more out of them? So that's kind of like a loaded question, um, Christopher. First thing you do is you buy Mark Jennison, uh, you buy my 30 and 30 reloaded package, which I'm about to launch here in a little bit. And you get those guys hooked up and you get them working with me on the one-on-one -on -one interactive live coaching, which we're doing in there, which is gonna freaking blow everything else away that everyone else is doing. But what you gotta do is you gotta start with you and you gotta figure out how you can motivate them. You know if you got 10 people, probably only one or two of those are gonna be the one that need to do it. So I believe, as much as I believe in helping everybody, you gotta find your winners, you gotta find your workhorses, you gotta find the people that, that need the excitement, the need to do what you want, the need to be pushed, okay? Um, but there's tons of things you can do. I mean, not you got to remember, money doesn't necessarily, money especially to the dealership, like nobody cares if the dealerships, I shouldn't say nobody, but these salesmen aren't really excited if the dealership's making millions of dollars. They care about what happens to them, and sometimes it's not even money. Sometimes it's little things like lunch. Sometimes it's little things like an after work um, bonding thing or, you know, like team team building thing, right? Where you do something above and beyond because these guys are there to work anyway. So how could you strategically place yourself in a position to make these guys feel better about their lives is what I would start looking at because you you just want to put some po you know, some positivity into them. Um, one of the struggles I think you're probably going to have as I read over the question is you're not going to get every guy to do what you want to do. 
you got fucking winners, you got you got middle guys, and you got losers, right? I mean, there's someone all of it. I don't want to say losers, but you got guys that are just there because that's where they're at. And that's up to you to find out what you want to do for them. But these guys up here on the right side, you might be able to take some of these middle guys and move them up towards the winner because you can get them behind them. But the winners are going to be the guys you want to push to then help the team. Um, I'm all about a team, right? I mean, I put up, I think my favorite video I ever did on my Saturday sales tip was if the team don't win, nobody wins. And that's the honest God's truth. I believe that you guys all got to win and you all got to do something positive with each other. Awesome. Uh, cool. Why don't we wrap it up? Do you have any final thoughts or anything? Yes. About I do have, have some final business, thoughts. Business brand. Yeah. Um, so back to the brand, right? Write down these questions. Who am I? And who am I doing this for? And what do I want to be known for? I would write down those three questions. And they're not as easy as you think, right? Like the who am I question, for me, I go back and I look at that every single day. Who am I as a father? Who am I as a boyfriend? Who am I as a, as a business, as a sales trainer? Who am I as the boss? I'm not even the boss, but you know what I'm saying? Who is I as the leader of this place? Everybody, every, every situation is a little bit different. Then find out what you want to be known for and push into that. You got to answer those questions and find, make sure it aligns with who you are. I mean, all these all these things actually kind of go in sequence if we put them together um, to actually make a business, which is kind of neat. But here's the thing: if you're not missing, if you're not doing your brand, if you're not doing something for it, and you're not going on Facebook and you're just watching this and you're not picked up and taking action, it doesn't really matter. So just like I need to tell my boy Don Brown down there, just get started, just keep pushing, and just keep dominating your day. We are about to launch the thirty and thirty reloaded. Um, I'm going to take some medicine. We're going to go in. I'm going to talk with Kevin. And this is going to be a, uh, I'll, I'll do a video or do something on it here in a little bit, but it's going to be a different type of course than anything else I've been, that I've done, right? It's going to be a lot of the stuff from 30 and 30, but a lot of interactive things in there. And I'm actually going to pour my heart and soul because I love helping you guys. One of the things on the stage, what I learned this week is that it's not so much my, my training. Yes, I could sell a bunch of cars and teach you guys to, to sell a bunch of cars, but it's the impacts I can make on your guys' life. And that's what I want to push into. I love you guys. Therefore, I want to give you the love that I have for you. And I want to help you guys do a little bit more. So that's kind of what I got today. That's Mark's Remarks Live. You guys have a great day.